Hi, friends. It's Deanna Willison from Our Blooming Catholic Life. And as many of you know, I am, if you can see my little habit here, I am a secular Franciscan. What makes this a secular Franciscan habit? Now, number one has the towel cross. And can you see on my cord, there are, oops, one, two, three little barrel knots. They've gotten pulled tight lately, so it's hard to see, but there are three. They are for the three promises that we make when we profess. Um, and you can see I tend to tag other medals in with, but it, that's not part of habit. It's just this little guy here and the three knots. 99% of the people you see wearing this symbol are going to be secular Franciscans. Not 100%. We don't check IDs when people buy them. You can buy them at a lot of gift shops. A lot of people who love St. Francis or think it's a pretty or unique cross will buy it. And it does look like a cross, doesn't it? It also looks like a friar's habit. If you can imagine, you know, their head peeking out here, the big, big sleeves, little hands sticking out here, some little feet at the bottom. It does kind of look like a friar's habit. Now, in the time of St. Francis, it became the symbol of the Fourth Lateran Council. And it's a tau, T-A-U, as in the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It doesn't exactly look like the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It looks more like the Greek tau, but that's a story for another day whatever. And people will argue over which is the correct way to have it. Let's not have that argument, folks. Unless you're making something official, let's not have that argument. <laughs> now, if you're working on official documents for the order, yeah, you should get that right. Um, you can see, though, it. some people make it slightly different to get away with not, not worrying about that, like on our little tiny rule book here. It's very slim, isn't it? Um, yeah, our rule looks pretty slim. But there are constitutions that are particular um, for each country and region. You know, the rule, there's, there's rules. They flesh them out more as you get down. So you're going to want to go and find those online. I'll try and remember to link everything um, that I can think of when I'm done. This is the 2017 edition. There is a 2020 edition. But the rule was actually written in 1978, this current rule. If you hear of third order... Franciscans who are following other rules. That's possible. They're not considered secular Franciscans. We changed our name with the rule in 1978 to help differentiate that. For example, there's the confraternity of penitents who were secular Franciscans, but decided they preferred the original rule. Okay. And so they're a different group. There's also been a group recently to offshoot who say they prefer the Leo IX rule, the rule of, of Pope Leo. And so they went back and they're following that rule. We're not those guys. We are the ones following the rule of 1978. As popes have given us new rules in obedience, we have followed them and stayed with it. Now, there are also, you might say, well, what about the third order regulars? They wear a full habit. Yes, secular Franciscans were originally a married couple who came to St. Francis. They were attracted to his way of life, but they were married. What were they going to do? So he founded the Third Order. We're the only Third Order who was founded by the same founder as the whole family, right? He found, St. Francis founded the First, the Second, and the Third Order. And in the Third Order, which was originally a community of married people, some singles came. Then there were people who wanted to live more in community, not just like in a neighborhood, but they hardcore wanted to live in community. And then there were some that they wanted to live in community and be celibate. So they became things like the third order regular. And there's a lot of small groups, um, very active ministry sisters who did not want to be poor Claire's and live in contemplation. They wanted to be active out working with the poor or in education or hospitals. And so they formed smaller third order groups. If you look at our family tree, it's a little crazy. Okay. Um, but there's so much variety, just like there are a number of rights within the Catholic church. There are a number of third order Franciscans. The secular Franciscans are the ones I'm speaking about in this video. So if there's such a variety, is there anything that you have to have to belong to our order? You have to be a Catholic, a practicing Catholic in good standing. I'll just say that if you're not, please take the time to set those things in order. Now, if you're someone who's like, mm, I really want to follow Jesus in the footsteps of St. Francis. I've loved St. Francis since I was a child, but I'm not Catholic. I will challenge you on that, that perhaps, perhaps you are longing to be Catholic because if you will truly want to follow St. Francis, you're going to have to come to grips with his love of the Eucharist, for example. 
Um, and so he was holy and totally Catholic. He was not a hippie, although he did preach to the birds. You can see up here the painting of him preaching to the birds. He did not preach to the birds for the sake of the birds. Why did he preach to the birds? You're going to want to learn these things and you're going to probably grow in your relationship with Jesus just as you find out about more about St. Francis. And that's the whole point is to follow Jesus in the footsteps of St. Francis. That's the particular way we're going. And you may say, you keep saying I need to read this or read that. We're going to have to do a little bit of study. Do we have to be hardcore scholars? No. St. Francis did not want that for us. There have been some really great thinkers, theologians, philosophers to come from the Franciscan tradition. Absolutely. But as a whole, do all of us need to be that? No. There's such a great variety in secular Franciscans. And that's one of the cautions I want to give you right away. You may look, I'm going to put up some links in the description below. You may look up and be like, ah, oh, but there's, there's no fraternity near me. I can't be a secular Franciscan. Okay, maybe there's not a fraternity near you, or maybe you've looked at the fraternity near you, and maybe maybe they're all married couples and you're single, or maybe you they're all single and you're married. Maybe their skin color or primary language is different than yours. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. What if they're focused? They're all into justice, peace, and the integrity of cre creation, and you really want to study the high philosophy and theology of St. Bonaventure, or you have big Eucharistic devotion, or you're very Marian. That's your strength. It's okay. Variety is good. We want to live a balance here. We want to live a balance. And if there's no fraternity, even in your area, when you see that contact map, it's going to give you the contact name and number for a regional minister, because you don't know, maybe there's a lot of people in that one fraternity that's two hours away from you that really do actually live near you. And they're just waiting to have enough people to start a fraternity near you. Or maybe there's a lot of like-minded people like you and maybe you'll split into two fraternities. I don't know. Your regional minister is going to have that information. And so they're the person you're going to want to talk to. So don't rule us out just because there's not a fraternity or a fraternity that seems to meet look like you. It may meet your needs. Maybe you need that balance and variety. And so talking with your regional minister is going to give you that information. And so I'm very excited for you. What are some things you may want to do while you're looking at it, while you're discerning? One thing you can pick up, ugh, liturgy of the hours, pick up your prayer life. If you want to be a secular Franciscan, you need to pick up your prayer life. Are we committed to this particular version of the liturgy of the hours? No, we ask you to pray two offices a day. And while we prefer morning and evening prayer, it doesn't even have to be morning and evening prayer. You could pray, you could pray from the older traditions and you could pray matins and completorium, whatever, two of them. So find whatever one suits you. And you can talk to your spiritual director about that. Oh, I hope you have a spiritual director by now. If not, contact that regional minister. Maybe he can hook you up with one. Um, and start looking at increasing your prayer life. Your prayer life may already be pretty robust. What might you want to do? Remember I said those translations of the early documents of St. Francis? Read who St. Francis really was. Now, this is a hefty commitment. You may not be ready to make this commitment. These documents are are all available. These documents are all available online for free. All, all three of the volumes of St. Francis, as well as the volume on St. Clair, and there's even a searchable online index. What's the kinds of things that are in here? I've done full reviews on those, and you may want to go read them, um, but I'll tell you this one here in particular has the writings of Francis of Assisi, the life of St. Francis by Thomas of Chilano, the liturgical text, the life of St. Francis by Julian Asper, the versified life of St. Francis by Henri de Avranches, the sacred exchange between St. Francis and Lady Poverty, and some related documents. So you're going to want to get this. Start looking at this. Again, you can look at it for free online. These biographies contained in here should be your primary biographies that you're using to learn about St. Francis. In fact, all secular Franciscans are encouraged to read a biography of St. Francis every single year. 
every single year. Now you do have to be careful. Some get a little crazy. And so, what do I have here? I wanted to show you this book I find hysterical. Um, Some people may, may not agree. Again, this video is pretty much, my regional minister said make a vocational video. He didn't give me parameters. So I enjoy this book, The Franciscan Catechism. Uh, progressives fake news on the saint from Assisi. It does crack me up a little bit off and on. Um, what does it talk about? Let's see here. This is a 2019 book. The testimony of saints today was St. Francis a do-gooder. Was St. Francis a pacifist? Was St. Francis against the Crusades? Was St. Francis an ecumenist? Was St. Francis a friend of Islam? Was St. Francis a libertarian? Did St. Francis object to ecclesiastical authority? Was St. Francis a revolutionary? Was St. Francis a egalitarian? <laughs> Was St. Francis an ecologist? Was St. Francis against culture? Was St. Francis opposed to civilization? What is the real meaning of Franciscan poverty? And what is the real Franciscan spirit? And whether you agree with this book or not, I love the challenges it puts forth to some really popular super sappy imagery of St. Francis. If you love St. Francis because you had a St. Francis bird feeder growing up, wonderful, great. I encourage you to go in that. Read some of the writings about and by St. Francis to learn more about him. And one way of doing that, you can also read the little flowers of St. Francis. Now these are like fairy tales of St. Francis, but these are good ones to read. Oh, look, here's that painting of St. Francis preaching to the birds again, the one that I have right up here. This is a fun little book to read and learn some of the, 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 the fairy tales, the stories, fairy tales. That's probably a wrong word to use. The, the folk stories we tell about St. Francis, the popular legends. Um, and that is actually in the Chunky Monkeys. It's one of, one of the volumes of this as well. Let's see. What else do I have here? This is a very much a trusted biography of St. Francis, the one by G.K. Chesterton. Two thumbs up. I've never heard anyone say that this is not a good one to read. So feel free to go ahead and read that one as well. What else do I have that you may look at? Now, our formation journal that a lot of us use here in the USA is the Franciscan Journey. I, I will tell you, it's a lot of boomer language for me. I'm Gen X. I don't know about you. I had difficulty with this book but I was in a class with some boomers and they were over the top. They loved it. They understood everything it was saying. It was more of a challenge for me. And it was hard for me not to get caught up in the, the boomer um, buzzwords, if you will. Oh, buzzwords always get to me. And that's a pet peeve of mine. And that's a challenge that I personally have. But so I'm going to say to you, you may not want to go and grab this yet. This is really meant to be done in a group because it's meant to be discussed, not just read. So what did I do when I was very much starting out? And I will tell you, I read this particular book, um, Francis, The Journey in the Dream by Murray Bodo is another one that I read. Not everything by Murray Bodo do I agree with. I love him to pieces, but there was that Assisi document. I don't know. There's some weirdness in some of his later works, but I do love this one. Um, again, John Michael Talbot has been called into question by some people recently. It's just a foreword. This is a biography that a lot of people will have read. Even if you don't agree with everything in here, I think you're going to. But even if you don't, this is a poetic biography. So you don't have to agree with everything. It very much, um, John Michael Talbot and Murray Bodo, I would say, can be very poetical. And so there's a little bit of license there. It's going to give you a lot of room for discussion about St. Francis. And so that can be a very good one to read. Um, those are both popular authors as well. This is a book that I loved when I was just starting out. I'm thinking I may come back to it. Um, this is the Franciscan Prayer Journal. Um, it is a spiral bound book. I'm pretty sure I've done a review on it as well. It is by Tao Publishing. Again, Tao, like this little one here, the Tao Publishing. This is the hardback version. Um, let me see here. Is there a description of this? This was from 2016. They brought together um, meditations from the book called Praying with Claire of Assisi and Praying with Francis of Assisi and made them journal entries. So they have start out with the peace prayer that is attributed to St. Francis. We don't really think he wrote that. If that's your main reason for coming, go deeper. <laughs> There's also the blessing of St. Claire. 
So we start off with meditation one. The theme is service to others. And they write that out. There is an opening prayer. There's a little lesson about Claire in this one. Let's see here. And then there's Claire's words. So that's going to be from the early documents. Then there is a reflection and some questions for you to answer on your own. Um, and you can write in the book. There's lots of spaces. This really helped crack open my Franciscan journey for me. For me, this was more, this was more my spiritual journey than the journey book. This really led me on a Franciscan spiritual journey. What the journey book does is, does lead you to some Franciscan spirituality, but a lot of it is what, what is a rule? What is a constitution? How does the fraternity work? What does fraternity life look like? So it was a lot more practical. And this was a lot more about my prayer life. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. So I love doing this one. I did this on my own. I think you could totally do it in a group. There's something else you're going to need to have. And it's something that is also discussed all the time in Franciscan. I can't say it with a straight face. It comes up every October. You're going to need a recipe for almond cookies. Now, I have a recipe for almond butter cookies because I can't eat um, whole almonds. They need to be roasted and put into a nut butter. And so this is my favorite recipe. Oh, my goodness. It doesn't say what website it's from. So that's all I can show you. <laughs> oh, wait. It says it's by Jess, J-E-S-S. -S. This is my go-to almond butter <laughs> cookie recipe. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, about the almond cookies... Go deeper. Go deeper. I invite you, you. You don't have to search far in Franciscan literature. You're going to run into the almond cookie story. Um, and that's in there. And so every October we make almond cookies. We just do. <laughs> Again, not every Franciscan is going to make them. Some are going to eat them. See, it's a balance. It's always a balance in Franciscan life. So friends, I hope that this has gotten you interested in the secular Franciscan order. If you've had, you know, a little tug and you're like, well, I really like her channel or why is her channel have, why does my channel have ecology stuff and music and Gregorian chant? And then I yell about at you about the Eucharist and then I'm knitting something for charity. And like, what does, and then I do book reviews. Like, what does this have to do with anything? I feel that my channel is a secular Franciscan channel. And so I try to show you the many different facets. It's like an icon. I have a series of icons here, right? And an icon is to show you a particular moment. Goodness, the San Damiano cross shows you a lot of moments, right? There's a lot going on in this one. This is maybe more complex than most of them. But icons show you, this is Our Lady of Perpetual Hope, a particular See, I gave her that particular name, but we know that Our Lady has a lot of different names. And so there's a lot of different icons. An icon is showing you like one moment, one aspect, okay? And yeah, each secular Franciscan you meet are going to probably be an icon of St. Francis. We're not all going to be the same. And yet you put us all together, bam, something wonderful can really happen. When you get a group that's all very similar, you know, they're all very similar. And that doesn't really help you stretch and grow all the time, does it? No. So sometimes things are going to be a little bit of a challenge. So I hope that you've seen um, some aspects of the Franciscan journey. Um, oh, you can also find these online. The Tau USA is the newsletter for the U.S. This just came out, like it literally just came in my mailbox today, like an hour before I started filming this. And there is an article here on, on vocation. So let me read this to you. This is our brand new national minister. Her name is Jane DeRose Bauman, OFS. She says, have you heard the adage, if everything is a priority, then nothing is a priority? Of course, we don't profess to live one article of the rule at a time. But like the liturgical seasons or the feast days, it does help us to focus on one facet to deepen our understanding of it. We focus on one aspect while still applying the other aspects of our faith and rule each day. At many elective chapters, the National Fraternity Council sets priorities for the new National Executive Council, NEC. In October 2022, the National Fraternity Council, NEC members, 30 regional ministers, 
and the Conference of National Spiritual Assistance voted on the priorities for the next three years, vocations, communications, and relationships. A few hours after we set the priorities, I was elected OFS USA National Minister, seeing that I had the pleasure of serving the OFS USA on the vocations committee for several years, I found the priorities to be very fitting. This article focuses on vocations. Future articles will address communications and relationships. During my tenure on the vocations committee, I worked with many others to come up with tools and ideas for sharing our love for the vocation and how to get the word out to the order. Word out about the order. See the national website for the vocations toolkit brochures, vocation prayer cards, testimonials, elevator speeches. What? I probably should have looked at that website first. (laughs) Many of us are lifelong Catholics. What was your reaction when you first heard about the secular Franciscan order? Did you wonder, did you, sorry, did you respond? I wonder why I never heard of it before. The same thing happened to me, also me. As a young adult living in Chicago, this reaction should be the exception. Article 45 of the OFS General Constitutions charges us individually and as councils to promote vocations. And I'm going to read it because they have an inset over here. General Constitutions Article 45, number one. The promotion of vacations to the order is a duty of all the brothers and sisters and is a sign of the vitality of the fraternities themselves. The brothers and sisters can... Convinced of the validity of the Franciscan way of life, should pray that God may give the grace of the Franciscan vocation to new members. Although nothing can substitute for the witness of each member and of the fraternity, the councils must adopt appropriate means to promote the secular Franciscan vocation. Hey, is this why my regional minister asked me to make this video? Sounds like it, doesn't it? Are you convinced of the validity of the Franciscan way of life? If so, your enthusiasm should be contagious. I challenge each member of the OFS USA to meditate on why we became secular Franciscans in the first place. Then give serious thought to why the order is special in our lives. Once we have thought and prayed about our own commitment, we will be ready to talk about our vocation to others. We will be ready to spread the word and the joy of following Jesus in the footsteps of St. Francis. Who knows how many hearts we will touch. And so I invite you, brothers and sisters in Christ, to learn more about the secular Franciscan order. And not just on a superficial level, even if you end up discerning that it's not your calling, you may know others whose calling it is. And you could say to them, hey, I really think you should look into this. Or this really sounds like you. Hey, have you ever heard of the secular Franciscan order? It may be something that you are called to share. Or, hey, Even if you're not called, but you still believe in the validity of it for others, could you pray for us? Pray for the secular Franciscan order. Pray for vocations that others may hear and answer the call of Christ. Like St. Francis before the San Damiano cross saying, you know, good God, gracious, mighty, and wonderful Lord, enlighten the darkness of my heart. Give me right faith, true hope certain knowledge, faith, and oh my goodness, I can't do it in English anymore, that I may carry out and do thy holy and true will. I do have it here. I've been praying it in, oh, it's under the iPad. I've been praying it in Latin. Look up the prayer of St. Francis before the San Damiano. Oh, this would be a good one. Can we find it in here? The prayer of St. Francis before the San Damiano cross. Is it in here? Let's see. Nope, I would need the index. Oh, my. Oh, I drove out a demon. Wait, is that St. Francis? <laughs> These books have a lot in here. There's maps. There's everything. Let's the undated writings. Lots of wonderful prayers of St. Francis. Let's see here. The Life of St. Francis by Thomas of Chalana. Let's see if I can find you that prayer super quick. book he lived in the clothing and spirit of the world no wait
You know what? I don't see the actual prayer here. I do see in Thomas of Chilano chapter 3 um, of the first book of the life of St. Francis. It says that here, the man of God, that's St. Francis, who was already holy because of his holy intention, was accustomed to enter the cave while his companion waited outside, and inspired by a new and extraordinary spirit who would pray to his father in secret. He acted in such a way that no one would know what was happening within, wisely taking the occasion of the good to conceal the better. He consulted God alone about his holy purpose. He prayed with all his heart that the eternal and true God guide his way and teach him to do his will. He endured great suffering in his soul, and he was not able to rest until he accomplished in action what he had conceived in his heart. Different thoughts followed one after the other, and their relentlessness severely disturbed him. He was burning inwardly with a divine fire, and he was unable to conceal outwardly the flame kindled in his soul. He repented that he had sinned so grievously and that he had offended the eyes of majesty. While his past and present transgressions no longer delayed him, he was not yet fully confident of refraining from future ones. Therefore, when he came back to his companion, he was so exhausted from his struggle that one person seemed to have entered and another to have come out. One day, when he invoked the Lord's mercy with his whole heart, the Lord showed him what he must do. He was filled with such great joy that, failing to restrain himself in the face of his happiness, he carelessly mentioned something to others. Even though he could not remain silent because of the greatness of the love inspired in him, he nevertheless spoke cautiously and in riddles. Just as he spoke to his special friend about a hidden treasure, so he endeavored to talk to others in figures of speech. He said that he did not want to go to Apula, but promised to do great and noble deeds at home. People thought he wanted to get married, and they would ask him, Do you want to get married, Francis? He replied, I will take a bride more noble and more beautiful than you have ever seen, and she will surpass the rest in beauty and excel all others in wisdom. Indeed, the unstained bride of God is the true religion that he embraced, and the hidden treasure, the kingdom of heaven, that he sought with great longing. For it had to be that the gospel can be fulfilled in the one who is to be, in faith and truth, a minister of the gospel. Wow, friends. I am so glad I opened it up. I did not find the exact prayer I wanted, but you may be having this struggle within you. You feel a call, a longing to to live as a minister of the gospel, right? To live as, and minister I'd mean as a true servant of the gospel. We say as secular Franciscans that we live the gospel life, gospel to life, life to gospel. And what does that mean? If you've been pondering that somehow in your heart, like how, how do I live the gospel? If you've been hearing these words kind of tugging at you, these feelings when you go in church and you know there's something you're supposed to do and you can't figure out what it is, perhaps Perhaps it is to follow Jesus in the footsteps of St. Francis. So friends, pray about it. Speak to a spiritual director about it. If you don't have a spiritual director, talk to a really close brother or sister in Christ. Talk to your priest about it. Really, and find out who is your regional minister. Talk, find a secular Franciscan and talk to them and start that conversation. You may, God may be calling you to live the gospel life of St. Francis following in the footsteps of Jesus. Friends, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the good Lord bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.